What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. Spring Boot's actuator, which is the subject of today's quick video, brings production ready features to our application that help monitor it with almost zero configuration or code. Gathering metrics, understanding traffic or the state of our app will become trivial with this dependency. The main benefit of this library is that we can get production grade tools without having to implement these features ourselves. So once we add the dependency you see to our palm file, several endpoints will be available for us out of the box. And as with most spring modules, we can easily configure or extend these features in many ways. Let's take the same project we created in the very first video of this series and add to it the dependency we saw alongside the property you see to our properties file. Now we can go our swagger endpoint and see that a brand new list of APIs is available to us. By default, only the health endpoints are accessible via HTTP. As a result, the actuator page only lists the health endpoints. To enable more endpoints, you can add the property you see in the application.properties file. Use the star sign to enable all the endpoints or list the ones you want based on their name as comma separated values. Let's go ahead now and try to test a few of the most used endpoints from the list you see. For example, the health one summarizes the health status of our application. If we test it out on our current app, it will return the UP status. The metrics one lists down all the metrics that are available for you to track, such as CPU usage, memory allocation, total memory, free memory, and so on. To get the details of an individual metric, you need to pass the metric name in the URL as you can see. In this example, we retrieve the CPU count metric with the help of the system.cpu.count metric name. Next, we have the loggers endpoint, and similarly to the metrics one, it displays all configured loggers in our application. To modify a specific logger, you will have to use the post flavor of this call and provide it with the name of that logger. There exists an endpoint as well to retrieve a logger by its specific name. The config props endpoint will list all the configuration properties in our application, the explicitly configured ones and the ones native to Spring Boot. There exists a more specific version of this endpoint that takes in a prefix and will list all the configured properties that start with the past prefix. In this example, we retrieved all the properties that start with the spring doc prefix. Next is the mappings endpoint. This one shows a list of all at request mapping paths in our application. If we execute it on our current app, all actuator endpoints will be listed alongside the few endpoints we created in the first video of the series. Now, the beans actuator endpoint displays a complete list of all the spring beans in the application, again, native and manually added by you. The last endpoint we are going to cover in this list is the scheduled tasks one. It will provide details about every scheduled task within our application. Currently, we have none, as you can see. Okay, after going through a few endpoints the actuator unlocks, you should know that in addition to using existing endpoints, we can also create entirely new ones. First, we need to add the at endpoint annotation to a newly created class. And by doing this, we will have access to several new annotations. So in this example, we created the my actuator endpoint class, and this class will expose three new endpoints for us. The first one will retrieve an element from a map based on a given key. The second will insert a key value pair into this map. And the third one will delete an entry from this map. If we go ahead now and rerun the application and navigate to our Swagger endpoint, you will see that the endpoints we just discussed are shown under the actuator section. And that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Take care and I will see you in the next one.